The term depth of field is used to describe uh, how much of an image is in focus compared to how much of it is out of focus. So for example, the image on the left of the train track, um, everything in that image is sharp. Everything from the foreground right to the background is in focus. Whereas the image on the right, only the uh, blades of grass and the uh, water droplets are actually sharp. The rest of it is out of focus. So the image on the left uh, would be said to have a deep depth of field. Everything is sharp right from the foreground right to the background. Whereas the image on the right would be said to have a shallow depth of field where hardly any of the image or very little of it is actually in focus. And this is particularly important because uh, which depth of field you decide to include in your image will have a big impact uh, on the aesthetic of the image. Uh, and you really shouldn't just let this happen by accident. You really need to understand how to control depth of field, how to create it, and, and then you can start including it to add impact to the aesthetics of your images. One useful way of using depth of field um, is if you look at the example on the right, the shallow depth of field image, uh, the background is completely out of focus. Now what that does is it adds a sense of depth to the image. Although looking at a two-dimensional image, it does give it a kind of uh, almost three-dimensional feel to it. It also isolates certain areas of the image so that the blades of grass and the water droplets are the first thing that you see. And that's because they are the areas that are sharp. So de-emphasizing areas by throwing them out of focus is a way of focusing the viewer's attention on particular areas that are most important. And if the background itself, if it was sharp, would be very cluttered, uh, also that's a way of practically of, of separating out the areas which are most important and the areas that are not. There are three major things that will affect the type of depth of field uh, that you get, but one of the main ones uh, is the size of the aperture that you choose to use when you take the image. So the aperture refers to the size of the hole in the lens that allows light to come into the main body of the camera. So obviously the larger the hole is in the aperture, therefore the more light comes in and vice versa. So it's actually the size of the aperture that you've chosen that will be the major factor that will determine the kind of depth of field you get in your images. And this can be a little bit confusing because you think you're dealing with focusing, um, except all you're actually changing is, is the aperture number and therefore the size of the aperture. And that does have a big effect on the depth of field. So looking at the image on the screen, in each of the three examples, the photographer has focused um, on the portrait or the person in the foreground. And although the image on the left, the background is out of focus, where the image on the right uh, is sharp, the only thing that has been changed is the aperture. The size of the aperture has been uh, chosen to be used in the lens. That's the only thing that's changed. So the image on the left, as I said, focused on the subject, um, but the aperture has been opened up to its largest possible hole. Now, each aperture size is given uh, a number or an F number. So this particular number is f2, whereas on the opposite end of the scale, this particular number is f22. It does depend on which lens you're using as to what range of f numbers that you get, but basically the lower the f number is, the larger the hole is in the lens. And the opposite is then true, the higher the f number, the smaller the hole is in the lens. So probably the easiest way to remember this is that small f numbers create small depth of field. So you can see the background here is out of focus, whereas the subject is obviously still in focus. So small depth of field comes from a small f number. The opposite is then true. A large f number will create large or deep depth of field. And you need to choose which aperture number to use in order to get the depth of field that you require for your image. So just to show you an example of this, um, I took this image uh, on the campus grounds and I focused on, on this uh, area, on the, which is quite close to the camera, and I then set the lowest F number that the lens was able to give me, which in this case was 5.6. And then you'll notice that pretty much the only area that appears to be sharp is the one area that I've actually focused on, so I have created shallow depth of field. The further the area of the image gets away from the one area I focused on, the more out of focus it actually becomes until the background is, is pretty blurry. So the next image, um, I've chosen a few uh, f-stops up the scale. So this is now f8.
So pretty much again, the background is still uh, out of focus, but you can start to notice that the, uh, the bush areas start to become a little bit sharper the further they are away from the lens. This is f11, and that continues. Now the background's starting to become more sharp. So just as I'm increasing my F number, depth of field begins to increase. This is F16, and the background now is almost sharp as well as the foreground, until the final image, which is F32, where pretty much everything is sharp. So just remember, big F number, big depth of field, small F number, small depth of field. To be able to manually go in and select which aperture number you want to choose on the camera, you need to be in a particular mode. You need to be in what's referred to as aperture priority mode. Aperture priority mode allows you to select the aperture that you want to use, which we said will dictate the depth of field that you will get. But the camera will then go away and find a compatible shutter speed to go with the chosen aperture to make sure that you still get a proper exposure in your image. And under most circumstances, it will be able to do that successfully. To enter into aperture priority mode, you need to rotate the command dial on top of the camera here to AV. So AV stands for aperture priority. Rotate the dial until AV is opposite the white line on the camera here. To then change which aperture you're using, you rotate this dial uh, on the front of the camera. Rotate it one way, it will decrease the F number. Rotate it the other way, and it will increase it. And as you do that, as you rotate the dial, the chosen F number will change on the back display of the camera here. So you just choose which F number you want for the depth of field, and then you should be able to take your image. However, if the F number inside the viewfinder when you start taking your image begins to flash, it means that the camera has gone away, it's tried to find a shutter speed for that particular aperture, and it just simply cannot find one. What it's warning you is that it will not be able to expose your uh, image properly with that given F number. If that is the case, then try selecting a slightly higher or slightly lower F number, and that will usually solve the problem. At the same time, you do need to make sure that your shutter speed, and your shutter speed, you will be able to see that when you look through the viewfinder, that your shutter speed doesn't drop below 1 60th of a second. If it does, it means if you're trying to hand hold the camera, that the shot will come out blurry because it's picking up um, camera movement during the exposure. As long as it's above 1 60th, then you should get a fairly sharp image. But do watch out for that because you are totally relying on the camera going away and finding a shutter speed for you. But other basics, select the F number that you want to have and depth of field, push the shutter button all the way down, and you should get the type of depth of field that you're after. I mentioned earlier that there was three things that actually affect uh, the kind of depth of field you get in your image. The main one is uh, the aperture setting. The other two are the focal length of the lens and how far away the subject is from the camera. So the image on the right, for example, the actual subject, i.e. the one area that's been focused on, was very close to the lens at the time. The closer the subject is to the lens, then the easier it is to throw the background out of focus. That's simply the way that, that lenses work. So if that is what you want to do, you really do want to have a shallow depth of field. You want to be able to throw your background out of focus and also throw out of focus anything that happens to be in front of your subject as well, then make sure your subject is pretty close to the lens. If it's meters or even miles away, you will not be able to achieve this. The image on the left uh, was probably taken with a wide angle lens. Now, wide angle lenses tend to emphasize uh, deep depth of field, even at the same aperture settings. So if you're trying to create something that has a, a deep depth of field, then choose the small stubby lens that comes with the camera kit and make sure you zoom all the way out so you're actually seeing your widest field of vision and then you should easily be able to create a deep depth of field. Now rather than you having to try to remember all that, there is a, a PDF crib sheet on the St. Matt's website underneath the photo media section um, that will just give you little notes that will help you to remember uh, those two things, how to create a shallow depth of field easily and how to create uh, a deep depth of field.